It's Alice here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Beyonce and a few other things. What makes news news? So I saw this article in Metro talking about how from today, I think November 14th or 15th, uh, 2019, for the rest of the year, the average woman is going to be working for free. Why do you say? Why would anyone work for free? Well, because of the gender wage gap, silly, of course, because the average woman gets paid 75 points something less than men. So for the rest of the year, but this is weapons grade current year, just article because why is this news for 50 years this has been happening this is being tracked but this is deciding this is the decisions people make people choose to work in certain things not everything is exactly the same i posted a response to it and said from january 2nd the average singer is working for free compared to beyonce because beyonce the amount of money beyonce earns compared to the average singer that's the wage gap between there but nobody complains nobody says beyonce is stealing money away from people we need to have some kind of government to come in and make sure other singers get paid the same amount as beyonce why would people work for free but people understand people have different value the market kind of dictates these things more people want to listen to beyonce than want to listen to your average singer so beyonce can actually get more money why do people want to work for free? There's also exposure and situation. I think there's a single thing Beyonce putting up this kind of thing where she wanted people to come work for free for her for exposure. So she thinks people might work for free. But hmm, some people are hypocritical, some people aren't. But why is this news? Is this something that's only focused in the United States of America? Is this more general? And then I was reading this article in this local newspaper and I'm going to go over a couple of articles and talk about some things and kind of point out how these things are not necessarily just American focused. These are things we're living in a global world information is all over the place some of these things that people think might be the end of their current society i think are necessary are more just humans looking at things and having the ability to express certain things and just because somebody expresses something doesn't mean we have to consider it valid just because somebody says something doesn't mean it has to be worth as much as what other people say just how there's a gender wage gap, just how there's a wage gap in certain things because we consider certain things more valuable and willing to pay more for them. I think we might be paying too much attention to some of the people complaining about certain things. There needs to be a complaint gap that we actually need to go back to and realize some complaints, some concerns are really not worth our time and we shouldn't invest too much in them. So into the video. We'll just go with the cover here. This is a Nairobi and magazine. There's a few articles here. See, this is more of a, I don't want to say it's a gossip mag, but it's more of a lifestyle type of thing. There's different kind of articles and things in here. You can see inside the exclusive playgrounds of Kenya's rich. So that's something that's also here as well. There's no rich 1% white people that are keeping things away from everywhere. The country, I think, is 95% sub Saharan. Black, Negro, because when people say Africa, you got to realize above the Sahara, it's pretty much the Middle East. Most of the people out there are Arab, but you still have those stratifications. You still have those classes. Class kind of thing exists. Uh, was a wedding a coronation? Weddings are very elaborate here. You can still see these kind of things. I don't know what they mean, coronation. You can see here some gossip about Broken Mirror. Esther Arunga, a curse of TV girls. I have some relatives the name Arunga. Might be some relation there. Distant. Okay, Broken Mirror, she fell crazy in love with a man who, with a weird accent, who talked big, used long, non-existent English words, wore flashy cheap suits and shiny shoes. So maybe she got snookered, 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 snookered one of those long existence English words in quote, quotation marks. It's, it's an actual word. What's wrong with these people? Snookered is an English, English word. I don't know, I'm not going to read that article. Here you have something about cash on delivery, prostitute attacks man for playing the new note. So the Kenya government went through this process of switching currency between these older notes that are kind of bland and beige-ish, this regular type of paper notes, to these newer ones, which are each of the denominations, I think the uh, what, the twenty sh no, the 50 shillings, the 100 shillings, the, I think the 500 shilling note, the 1,000 shilling, no, the 1,000 shilling. They have different colors now. They, their money is a lot more colorful. Um, Muhu's. Get my pedicure. So anyway, these are some articles here in Joyce Kinyangi. Quiet ghetto girl fled from poverty and ended up in cold cell over drugs. Drugs! Why is this lady taking drugs? It looks a little older for me taking drugs. But eh, people take drugs at all times. So um, that's that's just the cover of this. Let's get to the actual article. And I'll, I'll get back to this 
this specific thing here. I, I, yeah, I'll get back to this. But um, you can see different things. They have the different kind of uh, IG model type people. That's also a thing here. Women are very involved in this. But this is this is the article I wanted to, uh, before we go here. Asian Arena by Pooja Kotedia Patel. Patel is a, is a rather common name for the Indians here. See, most Indians will ask personal questions just for Muchene. I don't know what Muchene is. Um, anyway, so this Asian arena, it's because these are Asians. They consider themselves to be Asians. So yeah, I had the flash on and was draining the battery for no reason. But anyway, the Asian arena, the Indian diaspora. I don't, I don't know if I call them Indian diaspora because they consider themselves Kenyan. They've been here 50 years plus, a good many of them have been here for generations, been born and raised in Kenya. And we'll see that's a difference. You can be born and raised in Kenya and have the identity of I am a human being that is a citizen of this location. Yet, when you look at the Indian people themselves, their ethnicity, their ancestry, comes from the Asian continent, Asian subcontinent. There isn't a... I guess you can consider this, 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 this the Indian, it's Southeast, South Asian, South Asian, I guess would say that way, but it's the Asian subcontinent. There is no subcontinent of India. So when you come to a situation where you say like the Pakistanis in, um, the, in the United Kingdom are being called Asian, Asian gangs, the Asian situation in the Rotterdam situation, which is a horrific situation that if you haven't heard about it, check out Rotterdam and be prepared to be very pissed off. And if you're not very pissed off, you probably shouldn't be listening to my videos. I don't want you to sort kind of listen to my videos if you hear the kind of evil stuff these people were doing. But people are saying, oh, they're calling them Asian and they're trying to deflect from the fact that these are Muslims. I'm like, look, there's a difference between Muslim and Asian. You can say Arab maybe to talk about the different ethnicity, but when you talk about the Pakistani people, Pakistan and India are kind of close with the genetics of the people and they consider themselves Asian. There isn't like an Indian subcontinent when you talk about that. I don't know if there's a Middle Eastern subcontinent either. You can say Arab maybe to talk about those people, the Semitic people, and then also like the Jews there are also there. But we're, 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 we're anyway, we're going into the weeds here, but that's kind of related as we'll come back to the main article. Here, now you guys were here for Beyonce. Most of you were here for Beyonce. She was in the title. Well, look at this. So Beyonce shouldn't have snubbed local musicians in Lion King movie album, Saudi Saul's Polycarp. Saudi Saul is a pretty famous, uh, I think he's a boy to man of Kenya. They're very popular. I want to say boy to man. I don't know what's the contemporary, who's a very popular boy band of black singers. It doesn't have to be black singers right now because it's like in sync. They're in sync. Because I'm saying black singers not like we're focusing on black music only. This is in general. They're one of the most popular boy bands. Not even a boy band. These are people in their 20s and 30s, I think. Could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's not too important. They're at least in their 20s, probably in their 30s. Definitely not in their 40s. So they're around that age. Um, so anyway, so this is what they're talking about. Local musicians are not happy that they were not featured in Beyonce's album titled The Lion King, The Gift. For the remake of the movie's Lion King. See, there's, there's some editing here. Hey, it's, it's, it's some editing. For the remake of the Lion King. The, re the, mo the movie of the Lion King. Blah, 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 blah. I need to edit my own <laughs> voice. <laughs> so the Lion King remake, I guess Beyonce was doing the music. Did she, did she do any of the voices? Was she Nala or something? Or was she uh, Sarubi? I, I forget the names. And that's the thing, I really enjoyed The Lion King. I have some really good memories of the childhood. When I looked at it, when I looked at the trailer, I was like, oh, that looks really cool. But at the same point, I have I had no urge to actually go out and watch it again. Like, that story's already in me, and I already have it. It's part of my history, my mental history. I might watch it. Let's say I was sitting and had time and it was on some streaming service or I had it somewhere. I'd probably watch it, but to actually put time aside to go to a movie theater and pay money to watch it, no, that doesn't speak out to me. And I'm very interested in animation. Maybe some people would say, oh, just go for the animation itself. Yeah, it's animated lines. I don't know. Anyway, um, so here we go. Though the full concept of the movie is based... Though the full concept of the movie... Of the movies... See, come on, man. <laughs> though the full concept of the movie is based on the Kenyan and Tanzanian scenery, none of the East African artists were featured. Why would you go with movies there and then go with artists instead of just artists? Come on, dude. We're trying to be fancy. I guess this is the guy was talking about English words. I don't know. I don't know. Why are you trying to be fancy with these words? The Lion King, 
This is the Lion King, New Africa album, with soundtracks of the new Lion King movie. That is a weird sentence. For a movie whose concept is fully based on the Kenyan and Tanzanian scenery, that's the repetition, I hate how they do this in articles, but I guess it actually works, so they see this all over the place. Um, Use Swahili phrases and references. You would think that they would at least consider artists from this region, and not focus on artists from one country. What? What? Believe me, I have nothing against the artists picked. If anything, I am happy for them. It's a lifetime opportunity that you can't pass. I am against the people who decide to present Africa with artists from one country or region. Kuna Matata, Lion King, no, hashtag Kuna Matata, hashtag Lion King, or maybe I'm being petty. So I guess this is what Polycarp said. And um, yeah, Polycarp of Saudi Soul. Like, like I guess you're supposed to say it at the start when you start with the quotation marks. This is written in a really odd way. And I know I've been writing a blog for a while and I go back and I look at some of the stuff I wrote before and I'm like, okay. There is some level to it. So when people say, oh, these reporters, there actually is some level of quality and things like that anyway. But what, what's, what's going on here? What's he talking about? It has to be a region. What if it's focused on one country? Then you should just focus on one country. But we'll come back to that. Let's see. Musician Victoria Kimani was also not impressed. The movie, is based, the movie was based on Kenya. Y'all could at least had Lupita or Barack on the outro. Kenya? On the outro Kenya? What? <laughs> The outro Kenya, since we don't have artists in Rafiki, Simba, and Nala are Kenyan. What? Mm. Does she write her own music? Uh, anyway, uh, that's that's a weird sentence. But Barack? Why? Barack Obama is American. Just because his dad was from the Lugo tribe in Kenya, then he has some kind of higher ability to be in the Lion King and that will make you feel okay. But he's black American, so is Beyonce. So if Beyonce is black American and that's all you need to be to be in the movie, why can't it just be him? Or are you talking about the dad that abandoned him and he was raised by his white mother in Indonesia, became the president of the United States of America, he's married to a multi-generational descendant of slaves, I think in, um, in uh, what's it called? In uh, Michelle Obama. So he's... He's, he hasn't lived in Kenya, so why, are these, why would she be okay with that? He's not even an actor. I guess Lupita Nyong'o, who's an actress, she was in, um, she was in Black Panther. She's been in Star Wars as the orange person, the little orange person with the big eyes, the techie kind of person. Anyway, she's done a lot of movies. She was in 12 Years a Slave. I think that's the first time she really got big. She, I understand, okay, if you were happy with her being in there, because she's actually born and raised in Kenya and things like that. So I get that. But anyway... The album features international artists, what is artists thing? Like Kendrick Lamar, Pharrell Williams, and Childish Gambino. West African artists featured include Nigerian pop stars Tiwa Savage, Mr. Easy, performed the song Keys of the Kingdom, Techno, and Yemi Alade on Don't Jealous Me. Uh, Nigeria's Barna Boy has a solo track, Ja'ai, or Ja'arai, Ja'arai, while, um, Cameroonian artiste Sala, Salatiel appears alongside Beyonce and Pharrell on water. Other African artists incur, include Nigeria's Wizkid, Ghana's uh, Shatawale, and South Africa's Busiwa and Moonchild Sanelli. So just a few things here. People in general look at Africa and just say, oh, the African continent. But you can see there's some divisions within the African continent. I have seen, I was watching this something on corruption in uh, football in the different this undercover reporter was going in and finding refs that were corrupt. And there was a, corru- there was a ref from Kenya uh, and some other countries, but Sub-Saharan Africa, more than Negro. The team was playing, I think it was a Ghanaian team, playing an Algerian team. And the, the ref was like, oh, see, where are they from? See, those are the Arabs, where are the black people? So there is that kind of building up in a way where he thought, as the Negroes, they're going to stick together over the Arabs. That's, that's what that ref was saying. I was like, hey, that's weird. I mean, that in-group, out-group preferencing does exist in different ways. You can see here, this whole situation of SJW, we need representation, black people saying, oh, you can't have Lion King and not have black actors and and artists on it. And then now, they put all these Nigerian people on it. Now there's a lot of people in in, in, uh, the United States of America, a lot of black Americans and white Americans, and just social justice warrior people who are all for this, like, tokenism and and quotas and oh this this is black so it has to have black 
the people who go out and say, oh, not every black person thinks the same. Yet at the same time, if somebody isn't black, they can't understand how I actually feel and actually serve me. This hypocritical type of way of looking at the world. But anyway, so those people in the United States of America and the West might be happy to say, oh, look, these black people in here. But then you carry on that thing and you get to this level where now these people are like, no, no. These people are like, we have to have actual people from Kenya and Tanzania just because we think the Pride Rock scenery was based off of this. First of all, how many of these people actually know that the Lion King was actually kind of ripped off from Kimba the White Lion, which is an anime made by Japanese people? Then Disney took it, made a cartoon, it became famous people like Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Uh, who else was it? I remember Jonathan Taylor Thomas was a voice of Simba in the back. James Earl Jones was a voice of Mufasa. Um, I don't know who did Scar and the other voices in there, but... You have that situation where it was done that way. It's a cartoon about lions. Lions are also not citizens of locations. Lions move around. These are not Kenyan lions. We put these things on the other on the animals. We identify these things on people. We're saying that lion is Kenyan. This location is Kenyan and Tanzanian. So we have to have specifically Kenyan and Tanzanian people on there. And I think that's absurd. I think that's ridiculous, and I think we should move away from that because you're going to have these. You're always going to be able to have this more like in group thing. It's this has to be me. It has to be me. Oh, these people are complaining about this. Some people were talking about how ridiculous it was. Compared, complaining about how the Little Mermaid was being turned into uh, some actress Haley or something. She's a singer. I'm forgetting her name right now. I looked at how she could sing. I hadn't heard of her. She has an amazing voice. She's probably going to do an amazing job with the character. I probably, probably going to be another movie that I don't watch because I'm already happy enough with having watched the original Little Mermaid. And this is a really funny meme about the Little Mermaid talking about how <laughs> she actually wasn't forced to sign the contract about the thing. It's actually kind of against Ursula because Ursula signed that contract, gave her the contract, and then she kind of wanted to break the rules of that contract to get legs and go on earth and she also wanted to go in and break up somebody else's relationship so there's these questions about <laughs> disney and things like that but anyway coming back to this people were complaining about that people were saying oh that's ridiculous what are you talking about oh the little mermaid check the actual historical little mermaid story it's, it's i would really like to see like an r-rated version of it because there's some really dark stuff in that it was like some eating some some stuff just just check it out but anyway, so they're talking about that's a Dutch thing. But then you look at Little Mermaid and the Little Mermaid itself. Is it really Dutch? Did people think the original Little Mermaid just because it was a redhead under the sea? Under the sea. With a Caribbean with a singing crab. With Ursula who's purple. Like, it's not a white history thing. So switching that character around isn't a big issue in my opinion. Just make it entertaining. In some situations, if you change the race, if you change genders, if you change things like that, it makes the suspicion of disbelief higher. But I can listen to an audiobook. I can read an audiobook myself. I can read papers. I can read stories people write. Where it's my own voice reading the entire thing. I'm reading characters that are female. Characters that are aliens. Characters that are kids. Characters that are 80 years old. And I'm still okay with being those characters in my mind. So I don't really get too concentrated and pissed off when I see other people displaying certain characters in certain ways. I, I can see a one-man play. I can see a narrator of an audiobook doing different parts. So there's different things. In the, so how far do you want to take this? If it's ridiculous that Ariel, people are complaining about Ariel not being a white actress. Is it ridiculous that these people are complaining that, that singers, just the singers, not even the people talking on it, the singers are not Kenyan and, and Tanzanian. Kenya and Tanzania, they can make their own. And I, I wish we were living in the kind of situation where you could just have open access to stories and people can go in there and make it that Disney suing the hell out of people in, the, in Kenya for making their own Lion King or things like that. But you can take that same general story, create your own thing. So anyway, there's, there's other ways around this and I think that's ridiculous. One more thing I just wanted to go over. When I was reading this article, I kind of went over and saw these other things that were here that was kind of just letting you guys know how some of the things you see in the West are existing all over the world. Some people think, oh, the West is over. Like, Western society is ending because of this. These other societies are going to take us over because they don't have these kind of things that happen. But I think globalization is here. And you can see this. This is like the fat shaming type of thing. I was called a whale before, because of my body size. Linda Nyangweso. So she said, radio personality 
Linda Nyangueso, um took to social media to share her experience with cyberbullying. The video was prompted uh, where, after she recently shared a photo of herself in a bikini during a family vacation, and it didn't go well. So anyway, she says she was trolled and body shamed. I posted a picture because we were happy having fun. We were on vacation. Somebody called me a whale. I think that's the most creative one. I appreciate it. At least you did your research because you specifically called me a beluga whale. Honestly, the best thing I did was post it when was post and it went on that went on vacation. So anyway, she's talking about this. Um, he also stated the meanest comment was the one that I was told I had no right to have a child because of how I looked. She went ahead to share how she was how when she was young she was societal due to her body weight and would eat on the toilet. Now that's unfortunate and that's something that I think has happened a lot. Most people think this is in the West. I saw a woman in the United States of America on some show talking about how diets are racist because diets, diet plans, nutrition plans are made for white women and there's something specific about being a black woman that you have more stress that makes you not deal with things in a certain way living in a white man's world. Well, what's, like, this is what I'm saying. Like, I've seen a lot of very fit women here in Kenya. I've also seen a very, a lot of very obese women here in Kenya. So what's her reasoning for it being here? I'm not saying stress and things like that don't have effect on, on weight because I have dealt with that as well. And I see that. But anyway, so socialist, baby daddy, you can see that kind of stuff is here as well. You have this kind of thing here, but I was focusing on this thing. If you think SJW, people thinking body shaming is actually a thing, is the end of society, then isn't that, do you think it's going to destroy Kenyan society as well? If people think this is a targeted thing by people having white uh, beauty standards, maybe they think it's, it's expanded all the way to Kenya where most people are thinking white people are, if fit people are in a certain way and black women have a certain shape. And yet, these things are, are, are things that are all over the world. If she's taking it this personally about being told about being a whale, does she take it personally about all the majority of people who are probably saying positive things about her? You're not, you're not, you have no right to have a child. Nobody has a right to have a child. I don't think that's a right. It's, it's, a, it's a physical ability. Some people can actually do it, but nobody has a right to have one. But nobody is taking your child away from you because you are overweight. You are overweight. You know your side. She says, oh, it's it, oh, like, oh my God, my husband is the most amazing person because he's the blindest to such things. I, I don't know. Personally, there are some men who just like heavier women, but I think if you got in better shape and were fitter, I don't think your husband would be against that. I know there are some people who would actually leave for you being overweight. I mean, for you getting fitter. But uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Because you look at, look, look at these shapes. Now, are people going to be saying that's overweight? Some people might say that's overweight. But I wanted to focus on this in relation to that before. This is an entire thing just about gymming it up. About people working out more. About going to like different fitness. You can see this IG. You can check her out on fit with underscore P. Uh, undisputed upcoming fitness models. So this is coming up. They're talking about supplements and things like this coming up. Talking about being fit, where sex meets fitness, why I became a trainer, six pack versus uh, Kijana Mufupi round. Uh, it's, it's, I guess it's a, it's a, pot, it's a pot belly. Um, looks here to be these different hiring things. It's talking about just Jimmit, decrypting the new founder of the world of fitness. So fitness is kind of increasing here. This is increasing here in Kenya. There's more of an um, awareness of fitness and getting in shape. And that's one thing. I think people have better diets in Kenya. People walk around a lot more. So you've had a lot of slimmer people in general. But it's kind of gone slowly and slowly where now that you have more wealthier people, you have more office jobs, more people sitting down. where well, you have the wealthier people actually being obese, whereas the people who are more in poverty don't really have obesity as much as the wealthier people. But now you've also seen an increase of gyms, and this is all across the board. And I think it's a positive thing. So would she consider this, talking about how positive being fit is, would this woman here consider that to be fat shaming, that to be a fat shaming section, that we're talking about how positive that fitness there? This health at every side thing, I don't think it's realistic. It doesn't necessarily make sense. She could possibly be healthy, doesn't mean, doesn't mean her being obese has no actual negative effects on your body. Beyonce, this whole situation of saying, oh, we need to have representation, when you take it to the levels of absurdity, these kind of things, these kind of social justice warrior issues, these kind of social issues and oppressions and things that we think we have, are they really as serious as people are making them to seem? 
are they really as unique to your people as you think it is? When you think you're represented, when you think you're in the comfortable position, are there other people as well who are in a situation where it's worse off? Are there other people who are also going to be mocked? When you say I've been represented, are you also reducing the representation of other people who should be represented even more than you? When you start thinking of the world in that kind of way, I think it's damaging. I think it has a negative effect. And that's it for this video. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about this going down, 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 down. How far do you think this thing can go? On this person has to be represented in this kind of way. How general do you think that social justice warrior type of hashtag activism or you have to treat me in a certain way, you have to believe I look in a certain way, we have to be treated in a certain way, demand that other people treat you in a certain way or just to just let it go. Let me know. Goodbye. So thanks for listening. On the screen right now is some merchandise. You can find links below to the merchandise store where you can find designs like this and many others. Also links to my PayPal. Helping me out in that way is much appreciated. But let's apply these Sowell 3 to this current situation. Economist Thomas Sowell not only asks these about economics, but I think they can apply to the rest of the world and be helpful. So in these situations, ask compared to what? Compared to what is this complaint that's coming out? If you're complaining about somebody calling you a whale, do you also get the same amount of interest from all the positive comments? Yes, it's good to focus on the negative more than the positive. That's how you address what's actually negative. But in this situation, why aren't they just words? Why don't you just not really care that much? At what cost? At what cost do these social movements happen when you have quotas and when you move people around and you get in that kind of situation? It's like right now, once you start pushing this, it has to be represented by these kind of people. Whose jobs are you taking away? What quality of the actual content is being reduced by you focusing so much on the right kind of representation versus the actual quality of the content out there? Because right now when you get to the situation, you say, oh, black people are being kept away from these movies by white Americans. But now people can say, Kenyan artists can say, we're being kept away from this by American artists and this is our actual thing. Uh, this thing just keeps going on and on and on and on. And now what solid proof do you have? What solid proof do you have to back up all these things? What solid proof do people have to back up that wage gap that's an actual issue that requires action from other people? If it's just something like that original thing where it's just your feels, oh, I feel I was called fat and now I'm going to do this way, it can affect you personally. But in those situations, there's normally not a situation where they expect something out of you. Although there are some situations where it's not necessarily just fat acceptance. It's more of a look at me the way I am and like it. It's not just allow me to be the way I am because nobody is out there actually running after you with a burqa saying you have to cover yourself up in that thing. You can still be there in your size, in your body positivity, take your image, post it up there, but when you put it in public, you're going to get responses and I don't think you have a right or expectation to have to have everyone give you positive input. Okay, let me know what you thought about this video. As I said, nobody has a right to positive input. So even the negative input below is much appreciated. Till next video, goodbye.